Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says that the salah is the mi'raj of the believer. It is the ascent of the believer. To say that when you pray, you are connecting directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are ascending in a way that resembles the ascending of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he received the command for the prayer as he was in the heavens on the night of al-Isra' and mi'raj sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So prayer is very intimate, it's very powerful, but we know having not had the ability to pray normally in the masajid the way that we used to, it's different when you pray behind an imam with a beautiful voice, when you pray in a congregation. What was it then to go and pray every single salah behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who received that command himself? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would come out to lead the salah and he had a very unique way of reciting the Qur'an Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, he was the one who received the Qur'an Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of course, you can expect that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take care of every position of the Salah and each rak'ah meant something special to him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and praying behind him, the motions were perfected by him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But what was his recitation like? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he had a beautiful voice, a special voice. Remember Qatad rahimahullah said, Hasan al-Waj, Hasan al salt that every prophet had a beautiful face and a beautiful voice. And when he would recite the Qur'an sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yaqta'u qira'atahu. He used to pause between the verses and he used to draw out his recitation crisply and clearly. So just like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak slowly alayhi salatu wa sallam and articulate properly, the recitation of the Prophet ﷺ was slow and every verse was recited separately. He also had a beautiful natural melody to his voice and his voice was described as not being too loud. So it was loud enough to where you could hear him. And if you were praying or if you were near his house while he was praying Wasallam, then you could hear him from his courtyard as he was reciting Wasallam. Now, the Prophet ﷺ would frequently get emotional as he was reciting the Qur'an. But the way that the Prophet ﷺ would cry when he would recite the Qur'an was also unique. They described the crying of the Prophet ﷺ in his recitation as if there was a wheezing from his chest and a humming from his chest like a boiling kettle pot. SubhanAllah, it's just like how his laughter wasn't really audible, but it was just a wider smile than his usual smile. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu weeping was also dignified. It wasn't very loud Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it was so sincere and you could tell that it was coming from a place deep within his chest Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his eyes used to shed tears profusely. The tears would be coming down from the Prophet Sallallahu eyes, even if he was not making the sound of loud weeping. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu of course has this famous incident where he says that the Prophet ﷺ told him to read Qur'an to him. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, aqra'u alayk wa alayka unza, do you want me to read to you? And it was revealed to you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, I love to hear it from other than me. So he said, I read Surah An-Nisa. And when I got to a particular verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ How will it be when we bring upon every ummah a witness and we bring you, O Muhammad Wasallam, upon all of them a witness? The Prophet Wasallam put his hand on my knee and he said, حَسْبُكْ Enough. And I looked up and he said, the Prophet Wasallam's eyes were like faucets. He was flowing with tears Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he didn't notice radiallahu ta'ala anhu because the Prophet Sallallahu would not weep loudly alayhi salatu wasalam, but a deep, sincere crying from the heart Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that led to his eyes always being moist alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu of course, would connect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in his salah, whether it was an obligatory prayer or a voluntary prayer. But the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not torture those that were behind him by getting lost in his salah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and prolonging it when others were praying behind him. And no one loved his prayer like the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But he said that when you lead the fara'id, when you lead the obligatory prayer, then keep it short because you have behind you the elderly, the sick, the women uh, that, that come with their children and those who have to run errands. So the Prophet sallallahu salah was not long when he was leading the fard, when he was leading the obligatory prayer. And in fact, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard children cry in the Salah, 
He would not, you know, reprimand the parents after the salah. The Prophet ﷺ would actually speed up his prayer, alayhi salatu wasalam, and not reprimand the parents. But the Prophet ﷺ himself understood what it was like to be a parent or a grandparent with children in salah. There were times that Al Hassan wal Hussein, may Allah be pleased with them, particularly Al Hassan, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, would come and jump on the Prophet ﷺ, yes, in the fard as he was in sujood and the Prophet ﷺ would wait for him on his back so that he would not harm him. Umama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she came to the Prophet ﷺ as a baby girl. The Prophet ﷺ held her in his arms as he led the salah and then he put her down when he would do the sajda sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his fard prayer was a beautiful prayer to follow him in. And you heard his sincerity even though he would not recite long sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you enjoyed his beautiful recitation. But what about the voluntary prayer? Now it's Ramadan and, and we can understand, you know, how much we long for Salat al-Taraweeh in its full function. And even the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to lead the prayers in the first few nights of Ramadan, the masjid got so full that it could not even hold the people in there. So even in the time of the companions, the Prophet Sallallahu had that response from the Sahaba who wanted to come and listen to him read all night. And of course, the Prophet Sallallahu he stopped doing so because he didn't want Taraweeh to become a fard on the people. He didn't want it to become an obligation on the people. Now, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu has this interesting narration. He says the Prophet Sallallahu had set up this chamber in the masjid and he would come out at night and he would pray there in this particular location in the masjid. And the people started to, to hear, and that's what would happen. They'd hear that the Prophet ﷺ was praying Qiyam, they'd call the others, and they'd start praying behind him. So, on the nights that the Prophet ﷺ would not come, what would they do? He said they would cough, they would you know, go out of his door, وسلم, they'd raise their voices a bit. He even says that they would throw some pebbles in the direction of the door of the Prophet, وسلم, hoping that he would hear their uh, voices and he would come out and lead them in Salah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu came out to them one night and he was upset and he said, Ayyuha nas O people, you kept on doing this until I thought that it was going to be prescribed for you. So offer your prayers in your houses because a man's prayer is better in his house except for al maktuba except for the obligatory prayer. But if you were blessed enough to pray behind him in the voluntary prayers, you might actually regret it. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the same man, subhanAllah, who took so many surahs fresh from the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu He said, one time I prayed behind him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I saw him praying qiyam and I prayed behind him and he said, hamamtu bi amrin su. You know, I thought to do something bad. And they said, what was that? He said, I thought to actually leave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam midway, like while he was in sujood, I'd run away from the salah because of how long it was. Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu, he has a famous story. He says, one time the Prophet ﷺ was praying Qiyam, I thought, let me join him. I joined him and he started reading Al-Baqarah in the first rak'ah. He said, I thought he'd stop at a hundred verses, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but then he kept going. Then he said, I thought he'd stop at 200. The Prophet ﷺ finished 200. Then he said, I thought he'd stop at Al-Baqarah. The Prophet ﷺ finished Al-Baqarah and he started Surat al-Nisa. Same thing, I thought a hundred verses. He finished An-Nisa altogether. Then he finished Ali Imran, all of it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he went into his Ruku' and Hudayf ibn al-Yaman says, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Ruku' was as long as his standing up. And his sujood, each sajda was as long as the standing up in the Ruku' And in the second rak'ah, he continued to read Al-Ma'idah, Al-An'am. He kept on going with the long surahs. Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha says that one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi read the long surahs, the seven long surahs in one rak'ah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in the fard prayer, you enjoyed it, but he kept it short. If you prayed qiyam behind the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was connected to his Lord sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would take his time alayhi salatu wa sallam, enjoying his recitation, the beautiful recitation that we long to hear. Sallu alayhi Sallu alayhi Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam